Good morning to you. Mark Suddeth here, Hurricane Track. It is now June 13th, 2025. Happy Friday the 13th to you. I'm in Longmont, Colorado. I'll explain all of that at the end of today's update. But first, this is really interesting. I learned about this back in April at the National Tropical Weather Conference. There has not been a lot about it on social media until just recently when my friend and colleague Dylan Federico mentioned something about this on the Twitter. And then, of course, our friends at Fox Weather and the legendary Brian Norcross, who did the presentation about this at the National Tropical Weather Conference, discussing this new Google AI that is going to hopefully help with hurricane forecasting. We have seen the VO from Google, and people are generating like Yeti and Sasquatch viral videos that are absolutely hilarious. These Stormtrooper videos, and I'm sure Lucasfilm and Disney have got the attorneys lined up for that, but hurricanes, this could be actually very practical rather than these silly videos that are coming out. I mean, they're entertaining, let's face it. Uh, but what's the use here? What can we do with artificial intelligence, machine learning, all that kind of stuff? So that's going to be a good chunk of today's update, talking about that. And then we're going to take a look at the tropics, and then we're going to take a look at severe weather and why on earth am I in Longmont, Longmont Colorado, somewhere. So let's get started. First, Dylan, this is his post from yesterday. The Google DeepMind AI model is now available to the public. And I'll show you how you can access that in just a moment. The new model outperformed the Euro by a large margin during the 23 and 24 seasons. It also showed major promise with intensity forecasting. And that right there, my friends, is very important. Remember what Otis did? Remember Ida? Remember Helene last year with the rapid intensification? All these hurricanes that are intensifying quickly in the Gulf, those are big problems. Michael 2018, I could go on and on. So this is the post from Dylan. And obviously there is going to be some snide comments, a lot of blowback, a lot of, I mean, you know how social media is, right? Right. So let's go over to Fox Weather, and I'm going to just play the full 3 minutes and 29 seconds. Hopefully the audio will translate through to my little microphone here. But check this out. We'll go full screen on it. Hey, guys. Brian Norcross here at Fox Weather, and I want to show you something that was just introduced today that's going to be very cool and interesting for this hurricane season. It's a new, specially designed AI model for tropical storms and hurricanes released by Google. Here it is on Hurricane Otis from 2023. If you remember, that just demolished uh, Acapulco. It was a horrible, horrible storm there, and it was a surprise forecast. The black line you see here, that's actually what happened. The blue line right in there, the central blue line, that is the forecast from this new Google Hurricane model, and you see it's very close to the black line. The main point here, though, is that it showed the possibility of a strong storm. This is wind speed. There's what actually happened. And this, the model showed still a peak here, not quite what actually happened. But the thing is that the traditional models had this storm dying out offshore at this point and weakening, and that was the official forecast. So there was uh, no concern at that point for Acapulco. But if we had had this model at the time, we would have at least said, uh-oh, that's a possibility. We're going to raise some kind of flag and say, all right, there is a possibility of a significant event happening in Acapulco. All right, let me show you another one from last year. This is Helene, and you notice here it can also generate a cone. Now, I don't want any kind of confusion with the regular cone. This is all experimental. This is all new, but this cone changes. The width of it changes based on how certain the forecast is. So this shows a very certain forecast going up into the Big Bend of Florida and then a little bit less certain when it gets up here into the mountain areas. But in terms of the intensity of the storm, look over here. It's just all lined up, the blue and the black lined up. So that means it was a very, very accurate forecast from the uh, model, the, the new Google model. This whole system is called Weather Lab. And you can actually look at it, by the way. I'll tell you how in just a second. One more, and this is Milton. So it's not always absolutely perfect. You can see that the actual track, the black one is down to the south. There's where the blue one was. But it brought it up into the 
campus, uh, the Tampa, Sarasota area, which is exactly what happened, of course. When we look at the intensity, here's the wind, the big peak to Category 5. Notice the model didn't get that, but it did get the secondary uh, peak in here. So not as perfect on Milton, but this is all experimental. This is brand new, and we're going to be using it. The National Hurricane Center is going to be uh, including it in, in what they're looking at this year, comparing it with the uh, traditional ways. But the evidence we see so far is this going to be uh, pretty amazing that we're going to have access to this and maybe actually improve hurricane forecasts. I'll be talking about what the model says as we go through hurricane season. If you want to look at it, here's the URL, all right? Write this down. DeepMind.Google.com slash science slash weather lab. DeepMind.Google.com slash science slash weather lab. It's called the Weather Lab, an experimental product, but an amazing product just out from Google DeepMind uh, just today. All right, good news in hurricane season. Nothing going on right now, but stay with us. All right, so what do you think? And, I mean, Brian Norcross, you know, talking about this, it's, it's not small potatoes. This is a big deal, and like you said, it's experimental. It's new. This world of AI is changing very, very quickly. There's a lot of anxiety about it. There's a lot of promise, and there's a lot of hype, certainly, and a lot of unknowns. But, you know, anything that can help advance hurricane forecasting and weather forecasting in general, I think would be a net positive for society. You think about the economic impacts of weather to the globe and then certainly the personal and uh, you know financial impacts to us personally not just on a, a community or a national scale when you have a major disaster this could hopefully help so I wanted to bring this to your attention through my followers on social media certainly Fox weather has done a good job you know he was on there Brian TV as well talking about it um, and so I just wanted to make sure you all were aware because this is something coming up that we're going to have to deal with, embrace, hopefully uh, celebrate it and applaud its successes as we go forward. So we would certainly welcome your thoughts about it uh, in the comments, and we'll see where this goes. So there you go. All right, so let me drop off for a second, and let's move along, shall we? So we have uh, the current situation in the tropics here. I'm just refreshing our interactive map and we've got uh, tropical depression number four out here this is eventually going to be Delilah and the great news and it really is because you guys don't need any shenanigans down here this is going to stay on out over the open southeastern Pacific then we have another area that's going to try to develop doesn't look quite as promising and I'm wondering if the hurricane center is out looking this area and it's you know, we're seeing the GFS trying to spin something up over here, and the Euro is more on the Pacific side, um, and the GFS is starting to lean that way more, too. I'll show you that. We're going to get there. But I think this is a reflection of what's going to happen down the road, and if we look at this out over the next several days, the development chances are pretty low out to the next week. So it doesn't look like much is going to develop at all on either side of Central America. So here's the satellite animation this morning. All kinds of stuff happening out here. What color should I use? Uh, I guess we we'll use this red up here. Um, plenty of showers and thunderstorms. There's TD4E. The E, of course, is for East Pacific. But lots of convection overall in the Southeast Pacific. More convection tucked away down here in the Southwest Caribbean. But that really is about it. Nothing concentrating and uh, festering and hanging around that that raises any kind of a red flag. Again, the outline of the big old Bermuda High sitting over here, very easy to see, and our strong upper-level winds cutting across as such, also very easy to see. And it's June. We don't expect a lot of development in the month of June. And so why break precedence, right? Looking at the various models, speaking of models, boy, it's going to be nice that hopefully at some point sites like Tropical Tidbits that we can go right up here and uh, under global models or maybe AI, I know that the um, Euro AI is in here. That's right here. Uh, the AI forecast system, I guess, is what that means. Uh, we shall see. Anyway, this is the global forecast system, the GFS. 
sometimes the much maligned GFS, but whatever. Uh, this is the 850 millibar part of the atmosphere, and I need to use blue here so it'll pop better. So let's just move this out over the next week or so. So there's that disturbance that does try to get going down here in the Southwest Caribbean Sea. And I think the GFS is finally giving up, so to speak. And we, I think we humanize these things too much, but story for another day. Uh, I guess it helps us to identify better. You know, it gave up, it caved, you know, like a person would do. What do they call that? Anthropomorphizing? I got to learn that word. I call it humanizing. That's easier to say than anthropomorphizing, whatever the hell. <laughs> but look. That's the big old ridge, and it's just not going to allow anything to get out over water long enough to really concentrate. And uh, I am going to learn that word for the next time, believe me. Anthropomorphizing, close, right? Um, maybe in the Bay of Campeche, but this is a week out. So we just can't put a lot of stock in that. But look, there's the outline of the ridge right there, nosing its way across Florida, the northern Gulf, and into the deep south. Woo-wee, it's going to be toasty. And that's going to just allow the water temperatures to warm and warm and warm. ECMWF, also very similar in its evolution now. The GFS and the Euro, both pretty good alignment. And even the uh, Euro suggesting some kind of a weak little impulse in the Bay of Campeche. And uh, we'll watch and see. What I do see with this is quite a bit of rainfall for Central America. And that's important because rain of course, is an impact, right? Absolutely. So I am in Longmont, Colorado, beautiful area, really neat, just east of the Rockies, the Front Range and so forth. By the way, the Rocky Mountains off to the west are still snow covered. I mean, wow, it is just gorgeous. But anyway, I'm out here still looking for that hail, as is the ice chip team. Uh, have been texting with Dr. Ian Giamanco, I met with a great friend of mine and colleague, Taylor Trogdon, last night. Had dinner at his place, talking science and hail and hurricanes. And I'm going to be out here the next several days through Tuesday trying to find these big hailstones, the big concentrations of them. And hopefully we're going to be doing a couple of weather balloon launches related to our hurricane research that we do with weather balloons. I don't talk about it a lot because it's sort of our back, very special project that we want to pull off and uh, we test very quietly and don't make too big of a deal out of it because we don't know if it's actually going to work in a hurricane and uh, so we bring the equipment out here and we can test in the planes because it's very easy to launch and recover doing that in a hurricane we know is going to be extremely difficult we've done it one time by the way that's hurricane nate <clears throat> excuse me back in 2017 one o'clock in the morning something like that made it to the stratosphere, GoPros saw the moon through the eye, but that's about it. Uh, we want to do it during the daytime, so we might do some testing. Um, my colleague CJ is going to come out, <clears throat> excuse me, and we're going to see what we can do. So here's today. No, I'm not driving all the way up here. That's just too far. I'm going to concentrate somewhere in this area, and uh, believe me, these distances are vast out here. And uh, so that's where I'll be today. I think the ice chip team is also going to be in that area. Huge effort to study hail. Tomorrow, still the high plains. CJ will be with me. He, he and I both will be probably pretty tired, but whatever. And then on and on it goes. There's day three. That would be into Sunday. And then next week, day four, day five, and then we're done. Because I'm not going over to Iowa and whatever. So, yeah, we're going to be busy these next several days. And uh, to that end... I will be live, I'm by myself again today, but after that I will have a partner. Be live this afternoon on the YouTube there, so be sure to tune in um, and see what happens as I go after the hail in beautiful uh, Wyoming. I mean, I've been up there a few times these last couple of years, and it is extraordinary. So I hope you tune in and uh, see what happens as I go hail fishing, literally using a fishing net, put it out the window, catch those stones, bring them in, Measure them, weigh them, photograph them, throw them back. It's literally hail fishing, and I should copyright that. <laughs> hey, look, thank you for tuning in and giving me a piece of your very precious time. I really appreciate it. And if you're new to the YouTube channel, it 
come on, subscribe. Let's boost that up. Hit that notification button. If you find weather important to you, this is a good way to get no-cost information from somebody that knows what they're talking about, at least for now, right? Until I just get too tired and you know ramble and lose my way and whatever, like I'm trying to do now, exiting. But seriously, it's good to have you tuning in. Have a great rest of your Friday. I'll see you from the road. I'm Mark Suddeth, Hurricane Track. See you later today.